Christina. How are you? Hello, Lyric. I'm, I'm very well. And you? How are you? Doing well. It's a good day. It's a, any day is you. a good day when I get to talk to another quilter. Oh, you are. Um, I think you are very, very lucky. You are talking to so many people, to so many artists, like going into their homes and uh, I find your your chats are very very interesting, and you haven't told me to to say that, but uh, I'm you know I'm I'm excited. I, I'm always I'm 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 always looking forward to see more chats. Obviously. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and you're my first chat from Spain, so tell me where you are, and tell me what it looks like where you are. Well. Um, I live in a small town, 70,000 inhabitants in the south of Spain, near a city called Seville. I, many Americans have heard about Seville, right? <laughs> yes. So, uh -huh. um, um, it is hot, very hot in here. And uh, we've been on quarantine like, like you since 13th March. Uh, so now it's nine weeks. Um, um, the government has established like four phases. Mm -hmm. P H A. I'm sorry, S E S. Um, we are we are at the end of the first phase, so zero one, and uh, so at the moment um, there are certain restaurants and bars open and small small shops. Uh, social distance is, you know, two or three meters, um, but uh, no cinemas, no anything like that. We cannot, Spain is divided into provinces, right. like Canada, and mm -hmm. um, uh, we cannot go from one province to another. You have to stay local. Yes, yes, to, you know, to, to stop the spread. And uh, at the moment it's like crazy because, um, we, we have we have hours so from 6 a.m till 10 a.m you can go to do sports from 10 till 12 um, is the time for people over 65 to go out oh. from 12 from 12 o'clock until 1800 is the time for children under 14. Given the fact that it is so hot at the moment, it is crazy to go out at this time of the day with children. From, from 1800 to 2000 is for over elderly people. And from 2000 to 2023 is, is for, I don't know. So. <laughs> That's when we're in bed here. <laughs> <laughs> Which, did you know you would say, and, and today is Monday, Tuesday, and so, you know, it's, it's crazy. Right. It's crazy. Right. That so, is crazy. And when you were under tight quarantine, were you required to stay inside all the time, or were you able to go out and take a walk as long as you stayed away from other people? No, we, we, we weren't like in the States or Germany or... No, total, um, we were locked down and uh, we weren't allowed to go out unless we needed, you know, to go to the gross, grocery the store. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, you, if you felt sick, uh, you have to call the, your doctor and um, so um, I, I think I didn't go out for the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. So, fortunately, I live in an old and big home, so I have a patio, and uh, so I'm, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel like, like I'm locked down. So um, much in a cage in your own home? Yes, that's right. But at some point, you want to go out. So. Has your area <laughs> been hit really hard? Not my area. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we have like three or four um houses for elderly people i don't know what italians mm -hmm. um no uh, they haven't had any case of coronavirus the okay. problem is once there is a case in a in 
in in a home like that you know every everybody you know gets um infected and you know well, elderly uh, people that's what you said i understand yes yes so, <laughs> elderly people I'm sorry. yeah we have oh don't apologize we have the we have the same issues here we have several um uh, elder care homes where 100% everybody um, has been infected and it's just so sad. Yeah. Yes, and I don't have any, any family or friends who have been infected. Um, have you, do you know anyone who has been, who has? We, we've had three people die, but they're not close relatives. Um, you know, my, I have a, a foster sister who lived with us to go to school during the years when I was growing up and her father died. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. so we, and they don't live close to us, but we've, mm -hmm. it's, it's hitting everywhere. Yes. You know, this and is a real and it's a serious thing. And and that's why we're staying home because we love our family, we love our friends, but we love people. We love people in the world, yeah. so it yeah. doesn't matter. I could have picked this up from somewhere I don't know and spread it to people I don't know, and I'm not willing to do that. So, so I stay home and talk to my friends on Zoom. That's good. <laughs> Zoom. You know what? I think that in the years to come, whatever I think about the about the, the virus, I will think about Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> it was the Zoom time in my life. Yes, yes. Can you imagine? There have been so many. There have been polio epidemics and um, influenza epidemics in history when people just had to stay home alone and didn't talk to people i was talking to another friend whose grandmother remembers getting i think it was scarlet fever and she had to stay alone in her room for six months the only person she saw for six months was her mother to try oh. to keep the rest of the family from getting it because it was during a time where people died of this yes yes so. yes um i cannot imagine that really yeah. really we're Actually, so lucky when, to be able to when talk. My, when my brother was born, I had Tosporina. So um, I couldn't, I, um, I couldn't, I couldn't be, it couldn't be in the same room as him or my mother oh. or my father for three months. Oh. Can you imagine? You know, you're seven years old. <laughs> Oh, no. and you, and people, and your, your family tells you, no, <laughs> stay away. It's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> well, so the other good thing, <laughs> right, the other thing about being a grown-up and being a quilter is that what um, we all wish for time to stay home and, and make our quilts, right? Yes. Have you yes. been able to? Have you been able to keep working? Uh, well, actually, I work from home. Oh, I have a I have a long run quilting business, mm -hmm. and uh, we live downstairs, and uh, we have the um, the workshop um, in on the on the second floor, mm -hmm. right? So we did we we didn't have we, we didn't stop working, um, actually because um, people. People stop um, sending quilts for six or seven weeks. Mm -hmm. We have slowed down because I haven't hadn't stopped working since since last June. Oh my goodness! Um, so uh, I was like, I had anxiety, and my husband said because we work full time as quilters, and he said, you know, calm down. So you know, we have work and uh, so we, and whenever I have quilt chops to quilt, I want to do it, you know, as soon as possible uh, because I want to reduce the weight, the weighty list. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, I, uh, what I've done during the quarantine is 
to work on on quilt jobs for clients during the week and I try to do a small project every weekend so each weekend um, I didn't want uh, I wanted to do something that could be done on a weekend mm -hmm. the only one that I haven't done on a weekend is this the last one all right so I will show you later so small projects and um, to me, this quarantine has been like a disco discovery. Um, I felt um, for the first time, I've done things just for, I don't know what to say. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, I love quilting art mm -hmm. TV. And the first time I, I saw you was on, on quilting art TV. And whenever I see a segment from Quiltner, I think, how brave are those uh, those women? Um, uh, I think, um, I, uh, how do I say this? Um, um, I felt like uh, I had to do everything perfect from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was afraid to explore and now because um, I didn't have time to do big projects I said during this quarantine okay you're going to do something whatever in a weekend so um, now I'm happy <laughs> because I'm exploring are yes, you doing yes. new things? Are you doing yes. things that I, I can understand how that would feel when you work for other people when you're quilting yes. on their quilt? That would terrify me. There's yes. no way I would do that for someone else because you would have to do you would have to do it right for someone else. That is one of the wonderful advantages of being my own artist is that I get to make a lot of mistakes and messes and ugly things and I don't have to show them to anybody <laughs> you know I can I can put those over there and then think I learned a lot from making that mess now I can use what I've learned to make it better <laughs> so I am. I'm glad are you uh, do you have something that you explored and did and that was brave that you could show us um well I um, I've started dyeing my own fabrics Oh, good for in you. January. And uh, so I've been playing with uh, with all those remnants and mm -hmm. you know, um, oh, look at that. Those are beautiful colors and your machine quilting is lovely. But uh, what I'm saying now is that um, in the last three years I've been doing show quilts mm -hmm. based on illustrations from coloring books um, uh, pages oh, um, but uh, I'm evolving and now um, what I've been doing lately is using pages but uh, as a beginning I mean mm -hmm. uh, I don't you know um, I you don't start train there and I, then you explore yes yeah, so I just I just take uh, the coloring page, obviously, with with the with the artist's permission, by you know, written permission. Good. And, I'm uh, glad you mentioned that. And uh, yes, 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 absolutely. And uh, for instance, uh, this is based on on a um, on an illustration mm -hmm. from the German uh, Rita Berman, R I T A B. E R M A N, and uh, she's amazing. So I asked for her permission, and um, um, her pages. Uh, as I said, um, I look for inspiration on on her pages, but uh, um, for the first time in my life, I'm not afraid of um, exploring, of doing, improvising. Of, yes, on drawing my own shapes. You know what I mean? Very good, yes. Um, so, it's also um, inspired by, by one of her, um, of her drawings. Um, it's all about 
uh, valleys, right, and um, whimsical um, trees. Whimsical. And yes, mansions. yes. Oh, I love that. That is wonderful. Hold it still for just a moment so we can see. Very nice. Very nice. That's delightful. So, um, it looks like, like it would be really fun to work on, too. Yes. Um, the thing is, um, I don't, when I go to exhibitions and I see all those landscapes, um i think oh this this is amazing but uh, that that doesn't appeal to me i want at this time of my life i want to do things that hasn't got to be real i mean i i want to i want to quilt and i want to do um like three. yes yes so well um, that's that's one of the wonderful things about what we do is that you have your own mind, your own eyes, your own heart and soul, and the things that you love. And it's perfectly okay to follow your own vision and have it be completely different than the other things you see. And in our world, there's no one good way. There's no one right way. There are all the ways that can be yes. good that you can express your vision and i love what you've done that's still um, i remember um as i said the first time i saw you and when i saw um the kind of the kind of portraits uh, that you did i i thought i love it but uh, i would never be uh, i wouldn't I, would, I thought that i would never be able to you know to free myself Mm -hmm. to do you know to do that mm -hmm. and now i'm doing my kind of whimsical thing you know i don't pretend to do you know like a um, twist that you, you right. that you can recognize mm -hmm. oh yes this is that no no and uh i put flowers big flowers and small trees and i don't mind um trees that are are um fixture or uh, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, I want to see color in my life and I want to see things that I want people to smile when they see my quilt. <laughs> I definitely was smiling looking at that. <laughs> and, and it's perfectly acceptable. I'm so glad that you found the time and um, yeah. the heart to do what it is that you really want to do. I think a lot of times a lot of us go to quilt shows and especially if you go to the big ones you see phenomenally amazing quilts and you can either look at them and go i'll never be able to do that and just you know you're comparing yourself to somebody else or you can look at it and pick out a part and say i love this thing about that and i love this thing about another one and then you pull the things that you love and you make them your own and you do the work it takes to get there. A lot of us compare ourselves to those best quilts. Yes. And we don't realize how many thousands of hours that person might have put in to get there. They didn't yes. enter their ugly quilt. They entered yes. their good one. We have to yes. give ourselves permission to not be just like everybody else. We have to be our own self and we have to work to get to where our own self wants to be. Yes. Um, don't you, um, don't you find, um, okay, I think we all want to explore new things, but we are constrained by the, by time. I mean, I will spend Always. days and days doing things, but I have to work. So, how how do you balance you know the time that you want to to dedicate to yourself and you know and the time that you're living for others my my work is teaching so there have been years where i didn't make any quilts at all for myself none i also have five children so there were a lot <laughs> of years where i didn't do anything um and 
my when we ask about how do you balance your life how do you do it all because they're like five children and you teach and you make quilts and i'm like well you're seeing a quilt i made five years ago and i haven't made any sense so my balance is if something is up here something else has <laughs> fallen on the floor <laughs> and my balance is never like this it's like yes. this for a while and then like this for a while and something is always off yes. i my balance is more over over a full year, <laughs> I might have time here to do this and time there to do that. And um, and you have to find what gives you joy as well. I was, I could have quit teaching and only worked on my own art, but I decided, I found when I really thought about it that I get so much joy from being with my students and yeah. from learning with them and seeing them realize it's okay if I try this. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay yeah. if I do this. And that that fills my soul just as much as making my art. So I chose yeah. to do that. So and also realize, you know, it doesn't have to be in balance today or this week. You know, schedule time a month. This year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give yourself you know, in all of those years that I had, there were a lot of years where I only made one quilt. And then last year I made 30. <laughs> I had no idea I could even do that. You mean three zero? Mm -hmm. I had a I had a solo exhibition, so I had a really scary deadline. <laughs> I had to fill a whole gallery all by myself. And um it, and I can't say that I did it all by myself. It was all my own artwork, but I had a friend who I had to check in with every week and she, I had planned out the whole year. Here's what I have to get done. And she had that plan and she said, did you do your work this week? <laughs> because I'm terrible Not without fun. a deadline. Me so, too. Me so. too. She she was I should have given her credit on the wall. <laughs> this is because <laughs> Sue kept me accountable. <laughs> so yes. you know, we all we all work different ways and you do yeah. need but you do need to find time to do the things that bring you joy. Um and sometimes I suggest all the time just give yourself 15 minutes. Put it on your mm -hmm. calendar, give yourself 15 minutes and do 15 minutes of something that makes you completely happy whether it's good or not do it without expectations you can throw it away at the end call it bad art and then it doesn't have to be good um but you can realize what you can get done 15 minutes at a time ask victoria <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, she calls it 15 minutes of play i've always called it um, 15 minutes of bad art <laughs> i have her book <laughs> She's fabulous. Victoria yeah. Friendly Wolf. Yeah, she does yeah. good stuff. Um, yeah. So is there anything, Christina, that you would like to say to the quilters around the world? Um, well, to be honest with you, um, <laughs> I feel a bit sad because um, I was going to, um, I have airline tickets to fly to Dallas. On the 26th March. <laughs> it's to, so shoot, sad. to shoot a segment uh, to the, uh, with the quilt show. <laughs> oh. And uh, we have we have rescheduled the segment, the shooting um, uh, to September. But uh, I don't think I will make it because even if I'm able to travel, if I have to uh, stay in a hotel for 14 days in quarantine, believe me, I cannot afford <laughs> 14 days in a hotel. <laughs> right. So I don't, I, you know, I see that in danger. And this year, 2020 was going to be my first year teaching at Houston Quill Festival. And when I saw your post on Facebook, I, I so you you make your own thought, decision. They haven't canceled it. It was um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I see it very very unlikely. To be honest with you, 
um, um, so um, many people ask me, what has been your, your like your, um, one of, uh, what, what has been your, the, the, the things you remember the most? And um, one of them is um, um, earning with that quilt um, in Lancaster in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, first place, blue ribbon as first time entrant. And you know, um, getting a ribbon in, in a contest in the States, it's like winning the lottery. You're <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Lancaster, really? Um, and the second thing was going to the cool show and to Houston. Houston for, I think for everybody, it's like the Mecca. You know what I mean? I call it the mothership. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's like, yes. It's the one we all gather to. I, it's, it's my very favorite thing ever. I call it, we have um, a slumber party when, when all your girlfriends get together at one house and they sleep all night yes. together. Yes. It's the biggest slumber party in the world. All my friends from all over the world are there and um, it, ripping my heart out to to choose um well, not to it, go. but it, there will be other years there will be other yes. years you know what uh, i went last year for the first time and um you know what i saw many many artists but uh i i didn't um i was afraid to approach them <laughs> like oh she's 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 that one and uh, no no I, I didn't want to bother them so uh, and, and when I came back I thought oh come on Chris are you stupid I'm just sorry you know no. just you know? I, I had to learn that too they because the, I've, I've done the same thing it's like oh, look who it is. <laughs> you know I could see a movie star from a, a movie and like nah, I don't care but my favorite quilter you know, all, all of you that I have seen you on culture arts, on the cool show, on um, on so many places, you know. And uh, the thing, uh, the good thing about the quarantine is that um, now uh, I'm able to to do workshops, to follow workshops online, which I wouldn't be able to. Like, um, you had a coffee chat with um, Mel Beach last week mm -hmm. and she said that she had a, a student from Spain uh, it was me <laughs> and uh, and the thing is um, with this with all this quarantine you know there are so many things that I can do now like I'm um, I did a um, I subscribed to well to craft industry Alliance mm -hmm. and this and to that so uh, you are in the States and for you it's like more easy, easier, well, you have to, obviously you have to pay airline tickets, but uh, it's easier, but uh, being in Europe, you know, it's a long way to go to the States. It is. So, it is. Um, the good thing about quarantine is that, uh, you know, we are, I feel, I feel that uh, we are more connected now because people need to, you know, to be, to be in touch. We need it. Um, all these days have been like a like a balsam, as far as family is concerned. I talk um, I talk to my mother more often. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's it's so, the same. It's the same for us. My family is talking to each other from all over the country. We're talking to each other far more than we ever did before. So um, I want. I want this to be over as, as as fast as possible because you know the con the economy is going down, but at mm -hmm. the same time, I don't want to you know to lose this this thing, yeah. this connection. And that's so. what I would like to to say to you and to all the other quilters. We are learning to reconnect with each other in different ways, and I think we can keep that. Yes, I think we yes. can keep this connection and. And things like with this technology, 
I, I could teach quilters in Spain. I would just have yeah. to get up at a different hour and, and we can do that. There's, there's good things that are going to come out of this that we're going to keep. And it's yes, really yes. Good. Christina, it has been lovely <laughs> and delightful to, to see your face and to talk to you across the world. And I really appreciate your taking time out of your day to- I appreciate you that you, you invited me. <laughs> Right. All right. Well, you have a lovely day. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment and let's have a conversation. I would also love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel or check out lyrickinard.com where you can find wonderful art and textile related things. Bye for now.